Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're logging in from the world. Uh, I know this is truly a, uh, a global event. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for making the time to attend uh, what is a very exciting Finishing Strong 2023. Uh, my name is Yona Salamayo. I will be the host for today's event and very excited to have you attending. My apologies for one moment here. All right, my apologies uh, for those in, in attendance. If you would just give me one minute here, we have just had uh, a few technical uh, difficulties. I'll be back in one moment. Okay, and we're back. Again, uh, very much apologize to those um, uh, for the delay there, uh, but very excited to be hosting uh, the 2023 uh, edition of Finishing Strong. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about uh, BNET Learning, Growth Casa. Uh, Finishing Strong is an initiative of Growth Casa by BNET Learning. Growth Casa is BNET Learning's impact vehicle. BNET Learning is a professional lifestyle development platform that provides world-class training services to both individuals, institutions, and organizations. BNET Learning accomplishes that by providing a consistent source of relevant knowledge needed to thrive in the highly competitive global market. BNET is also dedicated to delivering extensive business technology solutions that not only meet but surpass client expectations by identifying and comprehending the actual business challenges at hand and delivering robust technology solutions that yield a substantial and transparent return on investment. I'd like to let everyone know that um, uh, as we um, continue on with today's program, there will be a feedback session at the conclusion of the event uh, where you'll have an opportunity as an attendee to provide uh, your uh, feedback on the event and your thoughts and insights on uh, how the event can continue to grow on into the future. Now that you know a little bit about BNET Learning and, and Growth Casa, uh, we'd like to, to, to move on and, and get a little bit of interaction uh, between the various participants in today's uh, uh, meeting. So we have a quick Slido trivia session uh, to create an interactive, interactive atmosphere. I'll just give you a heads up that there may be prizes on the line for those that participate. And so you'll see on your screen here in a few moments, a, a Slido uh, uh, login uh, code. So that'll allow you um, um, uh, to enter the Slido and to answer the questions that will be uh, popping up on the screen in a few moments. So I'd like to encourage you uh, if you're on the call, you'll see in the chat, uh, if you open the chat there, there's a, there's a link that allow you to access the Slido directly. And if you're having challenges um, accessing the Slido or using the code, uh, please do uh, put a comment uh, into the meeting chat and one of the technical support uh, advisors will be able to guide you through. Yeah, we see a few people joining, which is great to see. Again, I'd encourage you if you're on the call, this is an opportunity to not only engage with other participants, but potentially to win some exciting prizes on the other end. Vincent, I just saw your comment there about, uh, about the audio, so I'm glad that that uh, worked out. We'll be starting the trivia in a few moments here, so if you haven't had a chance to enter, please do. 
All right. You see many people joining, so it looks like it's going to be a competitive uh, little game here. So make sure to have fast fingers, uh, because from what I understand, uh, the people that answer the, the questions uh, the quickest, of course, with the correct answer, uh, will be in line for a potential prize. All right, I saw Akindoyan, I believe. Forgive me if I didn't pronounce that correctly, uh, but I see you're ready to go. All right, the questions are live. Questions are live. Again, if you haven't had an opportunity to log in, please do. Okay. The question currently online, or sorry, the question that's currently come up is, which of the following is a growth chasm by BNET Learning Activity? We've got YPSP, YSPP, YPPS, and YSPS. So for those that are familiar with the BNET Learning Initiatives, you can have a real strong uh, opportunity here. Right. And this is the last question. So again, fastest answer is certainly going to be ranked higher in the results. Okay, we have now reached uh, the last question. So in a few moments here, we'll be populating uh, the winners and we'll see that pop up on the, on the next slide. So just a few moments here, uh, well, that's tabulated. All right, looks like we had a lot of participants, but excited to announce a few winners here. So early bird winners. So those that are those uh, are those individuals that participated, not only participated, but got the correct answers and had the fastest fingers. So I'd like to congratulate a few early bird winners. Uh, forgive me here because I'm likely going to mispronounce some names, but Adawala Rahim, Joyluck Harrison, and Titus Fadiani. Uh, congratulations for being some of the early bird winners uh, for our first Slido game. Congratulations. All right. Uh, for those that have uh, been selected as winners, again, congrats. Uh, a member of the BNET team will be reaching out uh, um, uh, to discuss prizes. And we'll have some uh, an opportunity later on uh, in today's uh, meeting to also win uh, another prize. So make sure that you're staying engaged. Make sure that uh, you're continuing to participate um, in uh, uh, in the competition opportunities here. All right. So now that we've had a few winners, we'd like to move on to the next segment uh, of our program here. Uh, you'll see a slide pop up in a few moments uh, where we'll be uh, introducing our guest speaker. All right. 
So I will uh, now move to the next section of our program where I'm very excited uh, to tell you a little bit about the keynote speaker that we'll have for today's event. Uh, we're very privileged to be hearing from uh, Maureen Ogbana. Now, before Maureen uh, begins to present, oh, I apologize. Uh, it looks like we have a few other uh, winners to announce. So Slido winners, uh, along with the early bird winners. So the early bird winners were those that entered uh, the meeting early. And so we always like to reward uh, being early. Along with those winners, uh, we have a few Slido winners. Uh, which I'd like to announce. So first we have Tematope Edith. Uh, next we have Ola. And then third we have Kelichi Ndukwe. And I apologize again if I uh, mispronounce that last name, but congratulations uh, to our three Slido winners. All right, and now uh, moving on to the next segment of our program. Uh, again, we have the privilege of, of hearing from Maureen Ogbona, who will be talking about broadening horizons, what is new and what is next. Uh, before Maureen joins us and, and presents us uh, and, and speaks to us a little bit about that topic, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Maureen. So Maureen, along with being our distinguished guest, uh, was voted a top 50 inspiring Nigerian woman in 2023 by Business Day newspapers. Maureen is the founder and CEO of Valor Nigeria Limited, an advisory business and management consulting firm with a focus on improving the performance of mid to senior management executives, as well as business transformation of organizations. Maureen is a versatile and a dynamic business leader with 30 years of experience, including corporate business and human resource strategy, assets, asset and equipment leasing, auto sales and services under the Suzuki vehicle franchise, and automobile fleet management, light and heavy vehicles, and marine operations at NLNG, and personnel outsourcing within East Africa. Now, I'd like to encourage uh, those that are on today's call. Uh, not only will we have the privilege of, of hearing and learning a little bit from Maureen, but I'd like to encourage you to leave uh, questions in the chat section uh, for their speaker. We'll, we'll be having a short Q&A session uh, where we'll, we'll be selecting some of the best questions. So again, encourage you as, as a participant, as you listen along, um, to pose uh, any questions you have in the chat, and we'll do our best uh, to get to the questions after Maureen's presentation. So with that, Maureen, uh, I'll pass it to you uh, to take it away. Thank you, Jonas. I hope you can all hear me. I'm just putting yes. up my video and I'm starting my slideshow. So nice to be here. It's my honor and pleasure to be the keynote speaker for this event. And thank you for that lovely introduction. Thank you so very much, Jonas. And at any point in time, if you can't hear me, just um, send something in the chat box. I'll pick it up or just raise your hand, the raise hand buttons there, uh, so that I'll quickly get the information and um, find out what's going on. Again, it's my honor and pleasure to be here as a keynote speaker. And we now, with that, we now make a start. Um, I've got 20 minutes to share with you on this wonderful topic about finishing strong, broadening your horizon, what is new and what is next. Quite an interesting one, isn't it? Um, I can only imagine why um, BNet Learning has asked us to talk about this, share this today. And I think it's because we all have been through quite a bit this year, 2023, and it's important to remind ourselves that we can still finish strong. With the changes in the political situation in all over the world, with the geopolitical risks, with the economic um, situations, both locally, regionally, and globally, it's important that we all know we can finish strong. So this is... Um, a simple way to define what finishing strong is. And finishing strong is self-belief. 
It is belief in yourself that is fueled by the right attitude that goals are achievable. I can imagine why this, this topic was chosen by Binet Learning. Um, a number of businesses, a number of individuals, a number of associations have had their um, objectives, their missions for 2023 changed. Even the Nigerian economy has had its own forecast changed, revised downwards, and um, because of all what has happened to us this year. But it's still, it, it's very critical that we should note that we can still achieve our goals. And that is what is meant by finishing strong. Very important to take that away. Finishing strong is also the courage and determination to see those goals to conclusion. Finishing strong is a sign of commitment and excellence. And some people will add integrity. It is a personal decision to finish strong. We can give up. It is so easy to give up. But we can't give up because there's still life to be lived and there are still goals to be achieved. Now, there's a book by Dan Green, and I leave you with it to go check out on the highlights, seven key highlights on finishing strong that relate to life and work. And I'm going to quote from the Holy Bible about finishing strong, the benefits of finishing strong. And he says that finishing is better than starting. Very true. Very true. And patience is better than pride. Because for you to finish strong, you have to be patient. You have to ensure that you go through with whatever you set out to do to see to conclusion. Can you see my, my, my screen? Can you, can you see my screen? I want to do a slideshow. Um, hello. Yes, we can see your screen. Oh, beautiful. If you can see that, that's fine. So we'll get on with it. Thank you. Now, what does broadening horizons mean? To finish strong, to broaden your horizons, it means to increase your range of knowledge, your range of understanding, and or your range of experience. To finish strong, we need to broaden our horizon. We need to increase what we know. We need to increase what we understand. We need to expand what you have experienced. And how can you do that? Broadening your horizon also means broadening your perspective, your mind. It is important. We can't have a limited thinking or reasoning if we want to finish strong. And you can increase or broaden your horizon by education, by studying, either formally or informally. What we're doing this night right now is a form of study. We're sharing thoughts on how to, what's happening, you know, you know, uh, uh, in the, in the, on the globe, what's happening in tech, what's happening all over the world. That's what we're doing. How can we be better? You can do that by studying formally or informally. You can do that by work to gain experience. And travel is a great way of expanding your knowledge and experience. What is new? When I was given this topic, I said, uh-huh, this is interesting. What is new? A lot is new. The speed of change of new things is, is, is simply awesome, is unbelievable. And you know, just a few of the new emerging technologies here for us to share. Artificial and generative uh, intelligence, which we know um, have the potential to catalyze progress on business and society. We know what ChatGPT has done, I believe, most of us here on this call know that. We don't have enough time to nuance it. Um, for example, um, there's a study that has proven that users of ChatGPT chat at work have a percentage improvement on their productivity. They spend less time researching on their tasks because ChatGPT does it for them. So they've saved on productivity. But that is a benefit. There are also demerits of artificial and generative intelligence, which is a topic for another day, as we know. Machine learning, okay, augmented reality, internet of things, 5G, 3D printing, robotics and drones. There's a long list of merits and demerits of these new technologies um, that we need to know and we need to be careful about. There's a lot of legislation going on now in the world about the limits 
of artificial intelligence? How do we ensure we humanize that? How do we ensure we still stay human with these new technologies? Otherwise, we may, we may lose our humanity uh, with these new technologies. I imagine we all have heard about um, um, the impact of AI on low skill occupation or low skill workers. In the previous advances of technology, like the uh, third revolution or second revolution, um, for example, the typewriter and the secretary, and the, the onset of computers and the and the, and then the reduction in the number of secretaries we had at work. Remember those days? I think some 20, 25 years ago, everyone had a secretary and everyone had a typewriter. But at the onset of personal computers, the days of secretaries were numbered. And now you have very few people who've got personal secretaries. Everyone does their own um, secretarial duties on their laptops. So technology in those in the previous revolution affected low skill occupation. But guess what? Artificial intelligence in this fourth revolution is impacting high skill occupation. Like those of you who are in tech, like those of us who are in medicine, yeah, in the medical space and so many other industries. For example, the radiologists at work with artificial intelligence can do their work a lot better. The radiologists in the lab, in the medical lab, can do their work a lot better with the use of artificial intelligence um, equipment and programs. And the radiologist is not a low-skilled worker, he's a high-skilled worker. The same goes for tech um, um, skills. So there are merits and demerits of these new technologies. And these are some of the things that are new that we are discovering that we didn't have in the previous dispensation of technological revolution. Are we making sense? Does it, is it resonating? Um, is it, you know, out there? Is it, is it relatable? Just put something in the chat box for me. Yeah, yeah, okay. Riz Katula says yes. Yes, absolutely. I like that. Very true. Very true. So we need to be careful. And that's why there's a, quite a bit of anxiety and kind of panic about um, is AI here to take our jobs? But you see, we can find a balance. But today is not the day and time to nuance that. Let's make progress because I've got um, about 15 more minutes. What's new in industry trends? New developments in a market or industry that affect the business environment, like decision-making based on artificial intelligence. Yes, true. Automation, expansion of the Internet of Things, metaverse, engines powered by artificial intelligence, automated mobility. If we had the time, I would have shown you the, um, the short video trending on WhatsApp about the autonomous vehicle that has been launched in California. Totally autonomous. Totally autonomous. Also, it looks like you know, something in the far ends of the future, but it's here now, it is here now. And things like making your choice of choosing a movie on Netflix powered by AI. In fact, there's a lawsuit that was in the news in the month of October or November about um, someone who um, um, put a lawsuit against Netflix and others because her claim was that they violated her privacy. They didn't know she was of a certain sexual orientation before she did. Otherwise, how would they have known she had that orientation? And that was simple because the algorithms in the service she bought just picked up on her personality and her sexual orientation way before she knew she was, whatever she is. So these are industry trends, they are new developments, as we can see, and that is decision-making based on artificial intelligence. If you Googled an online magazine or, or education or any site, they will, they will start to send you material similar to the one you just asked for. And that's because of what artificial intelligence. Okay, we've talked about that. Now let's look at the impact of high ride hailing services on unemployment of middle-aged male population in Nigeria. Typical example, if you're Nigerian and you lived in Nigeria or still living in Nigeria, some 15 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, 
taxes were the prerogative of middle-aged men in this country, Nigeria, if you lived here. Now, ride-hailing services came on board less than 10 years ago and put taxes, the traditional yellow and black taxes in the, uh, in the capital, Lagos, um, out of business. So you've got the Ubers and the Bulls and all the other new ride-hailing services that have put those middle-aged men out of work. So it's, a, it's, it's important to note these trends and to take note of them when you make your decision on what is new, what is next to navigate your career, to navigate your choice, to navigate um, whatever you want to do with your life. What is new in innovative practices? Let's start with innovation. Innovation is an action or process of a new method or idea or product. Innovative practices are the application of known procedures in new circumstances in which they have not been previously tested. Hmm. Known procedures in new circumstances in which they have not been previously tested. Let's take the example of a clinician who provides a medical solution that is new, untested, and or non standard to a patient in the course of clinical care. And that is not part of a research study. And that is happening more and more. As an example, a patient with diabetes that the clinician is testing um, new medication or a, 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 a cocktail of medication to address the, 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 the diabetic patient's particular circumstances. That is innovative practices. And it's happening more and more in the field of medicine and I'm sure in other fields. There are new and effective strategies, methods, and techniques that organizations adopt to drive growth, improve operational efficiency, and enhance customer service. We all know this. The advent of COVID showed us a number of these new strategies and techniques to adopt to drive growth, improve efficiency, and customer experience. So what is next? This is really where I would want us to spend time in our last seven minutes. What is next starts from your purpose? Do we all have a purpose? And our purpose is what underlies why we do what we do. What is my purpose for being here this evening, sharing with you thoughts on broadening our horizon, finishing strong? What are our objectives? What are our goals? What is your purpose for the job you do? What is the purpose for what you do and why you do that? It is the why behind your behind what you do. What is that? What are our objectives? What are our goals? It's important to keep dwell deeply on this, to nuance this, to think deeply, to do a deep dive into these questions: purpose, goals, objectives. Because the proper problems that we solve currently and the ones we want to solve are important in this journey of finishing strong, in this journey of what is new and what is next. Think about it for a minute. The problems we're solving in our jobs, the services we offer or the products we offer in our jobs are, are designed to solve problems. And so the purpose, the reason that we do those jobs or offer those products and services is important that we nuance it or we nuance them so that we can start to think, okay, so where do I go to from here? Where do I go to from here so that I can make better impact, positive impact? And we need to consider a lot of militating factors, geopolitics, national, regional, global economic indices, migration, my purpose. My purpose is to impact young people, to help guide them in their educational journey. And so I, I'm just speaking out loud of what a purpose can be, what is next, what is driving us. And therefore, 
I will do all I can to educate the young people in Nigeria or in Africa so they don't have to leave the shores of Africa for the first world or other, or other um, um, regions. It's important to consider these things. What is next? There is a lot that is happening in our world today. The World Bank published in the past, well, the announcement was in the past 72 hours that by 2035, the workforce in Africa will be 400 million. Publication by the World Bank in the past 72 hours, it made the news, the population of the workforce in Africa by 2035 will be 400 million. That is the largest number of workforce that we know as of today. That is what is next. That is what the future is. So what are we doing to be part of that? What are we doing to be relevant at that time? What are we doing at this point in time to make sure that if we are in the workforce by 2035, we're impacting positively? So let's now draw, make a link between where we started from, finishing strong. We can still achieve our goals, irrespective of how we started, 2023 or previous years. If you're starting afresh or you're continuing on your journey, career journey or whatever journey, you can still finish strong. You can still hit the bullseye with your goals and your objectives. If you broaden your horizon by studying, by understanding what is going on in the world and the society and your community, you can still finish strong if you take a hard look, close look at what is happening by way of new technologies, emerging technologies, innovative practices, and place yourself, position yourself very well so that you can achieve your goals. It is possible to achieve those goals. And there are wonderful opportunities for each and every one of, one of us to achieve those goals. So that is the essence of this short discussion or this keynote speech. You can finish strong. You can achieve your goals. You can do that if you apply yourself to learning, to working, to understanding. You can do that if you do an environmental scanning and a self-evaluation of how you can and where you can play your part. You can finish strong if you look at the future and what it brings. But you must study, you must work hard, you must be committed. You must not be distracted and you must stay focused and look ahead. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a great audience. I will now take a look at a quick look at the chat box. If there are comments on questions, I've dropped three questions. Um, okay, someone says I've dropped three questions, but I guess the host, as the host has said, we will come back to a short Q&A at the end of it all. But thank you for being a wonderful audience. And it's my honor and pleasure to be here with you this night. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you very much, Maureen. What a wonderful presentation. Uh, I was making notes throughout and, uh, and I noted all the activity in the, in the chat, very lively discussion um, about the benefits and potential risks and challenges associated with, with uh, the rate at which the world is evolving. Uh, I wanted to, to to make note of a few things, a few trends that I noticed in the chat. Again, great to see all the engagement amongst participants. We've got almost 80 participants uh, in the room today. And so a few things that I noted that um, uh, that I'd like to, to commend for people bringing up, but also as a way um, um, to kind of move into our Q&A period. So a few things and, and patterns that emerged uh, many people commented on the positives of uh, of tech innovation um, around the world and what that what what that's allowed uh, everyone to accomplish in terms of efficiency. Marine, you talked a, a little bit about uh, different uh, professions like radiologists, etc., and how they've been able to leverage AI and other technology uh, to increase their efficiency. There was a lot of a uh, healthy debate in the chat about the uh, the need to adapt. Um, so, of course, as the world changes, you don't want to be left behind. And so the opportunity and the need that we have to adapt uh, to, to the changing landscape. 
I thought it was really interesting, Maureen, how you mentioned 400 million um, uh, people going to be in the workforce in, in Africa in the coming years. Uh, that's a great opportunity. That's a lot of leverage and scale that we have uh, to continue to move the continent forward and, and to continue to influence the world. Uh, there was a comment that I saw uh, regarding um, uh, the benefits of, of, of AI for professions like lawyers. Um, Raz Qualta, I want to uh, forgive me if I pronounce that uh, name wrong, but she had mentioned um, how AI in, in uh, the field of law uh, has assisted with the workload for, for lawyers and research and allowing them to quickly or more quickly uh, complete their research. So uh, a lot of great healthy debate. And I, I think certainly, uh, um, as you said, Maureen, a large awareness that um, there's a real challenge ahead uh, with the, the way the landscape is shifting, but equally a big opportunity for those that take advantage uh, and apply themselves to learning um, uh, to really excel in the shifting landscape. So I will, uh, I'll go through the chat here and see if there's any questions um, um, uh, that people are looking for you to answer, Maureen. Again, if you're participating today, uh, I'd encourage you to post a question for Maureen. It's not often that we have uh, experts in their uh, in their respective fields available to us uh, to answer questions so freely. So again, I'd encourage you if you have a question uh, to please post that in the chat. Okay, so the question here is, uh, Maureen, thank you for your enlightening presentation. Now with the uprise of AI, uh, Sorry, shifting a little bit here. Where we will, where will developing critical thinking skills be needed and harnessed? Okay, where will, where the question is, where will developing or why will developing critical thinking skills be developed or harnessed? Can you say yeah. that one more time for me, please? So the question here is, where or why will developing critical thinking need, skills be needed and harnessed? Okay. All right, so this is my personal take, and I have a few of the um, really um, top AI experts say this. AI is artificial intelligence. It's not the original intelligence. It doesn't have the human aspect of intelligence. Some of the AI that has been developed lately have come, are getting closer to having the human intelligence. So the human intelligence still trumps artificial intelligence. And that's why the name is artificial intelligence as we speak in the year 2023. We don't know if the name will change in future, but today it's called artificial intelligence. So critical thinking skills are skills for human beings as we speak, because they make um, the skills use both what I would call hardcore and soft core. The skills use your emotions, which artificial intelligence don't have yet. So they use your emotions as well as your non-emotive skills. And that is what artificial intelligence doesn't have yet. So there is a place for critical thinking skills yet in this journey of the fourth industrial revolution. I hope that answers your question. But it's a very um, interesting one and the argument could go on all night. Thank you. So we have another question here that's more relevant uh, or specific to this, uh, uh, the person that's asking. They had said, my chosen career path is finance and I have a strong passion for SDG four and eight, considering a master's in public policy. Uh, how can I put these two in sync to achieve my life and social impact purpose. Mm. You already did. Um, you already did. In one of the slides, I don't didn't dwell on it. Um, we talked about purpose and objectives and um, SDG goals. And um, I had wanted in 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 this very short time we had for the keynote speech to get all of us attuned to the idea of the work we do should solve a problem because for some reason we haven't been taught 
in uh, formal education that the work we do, ultimately what we're studying should culminate in work and the work we do should solve a problem. And if the work we do solves one of the top 17 problems on earth, which are the SDG goals, then we've done great. So if you have education in finance and you have an interest in solving SDG goals, then you're, you're good, you're good. All right, you're good. So just um, get probably get a career advisor or find um, someone in your space that you admire and study. Maybe not someone, people you admire in your, in your industry and study how they achieve what they did and see how you can help get that to drive you. Or you can get a career advisor to help you with that. I hope I've been able to answer your question. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. The next question is, is more general, and so I think widely applicable. Uh, it says, Maureen, you spoke about working hard to stay relevant. Can you give a few examples of how? Okay. What is relevance? You have to do that. Relevance depends on you. Relevance, and that depends on your values, really. On your values. Relevance could be being available to guide people or share with people, guide people on, on, on a course. Relevance doesn't have to be having a microphone in your hand and walking the streets of your town or city and getting everyone to see you. Relevance could be developing yourself to the extent that if a conversation is being held in your family or in your office, on your community, on your area of expertise, that conversation will not be concluded except if you are seated at the table. That is relevance. Relevance depends is again defined by each and every one of us, but generally it means to be of note or of recognition as being positively impactful in whatever space you choose to be. I hope that has answered your question. Thank you, Maureen. So we've got a lot of questions. Uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, of interest here. And, and uh, so fine. I thank everyone for participating. We are gonna limit the number of uh, questions that are answered simply for time, but Maureen, perhaps I'll give you one or two more questions. The next That's one- fine. And I can answer the rest after this call if BNET Learning has um a mechanism to get answers and transmit to the audience. I can answer them after this call, but not this night, please. Absolutely, absolutely. So our tech support has ch chimed into the uh, uh, into the chat there to mention that uh, all questions will be recorded uh, and there will be an opportunity for Maureen to provide her answers in another format uh, after uh, the session. So the last question I'll leave you with here is what is your advice for being consistent with one's goals? How can you stay consistent with those goals? Okay, so I'll say this for free. Goals change and they should change. You see the goal you had at the age of 16, probably in your final year of, um, um, depending on the part of the world where you school, we call the secondary school in this part of the world or senior form. It's not the same goal you would have at the age of 26 or 36, 46 or 56 and older. But whatever your goals are, sorry, can you can you say that question one more time? So I make sure I nail it. Can you say that question one more time? Yeah, absolutely. The spirit of the question is really, how can you stay consistent with your goals? Okay, so, so mm -hmm. the, the crux of being consistent with your goal is really about your purpose. What drives your goals is really your purpose and your purpose in life. And if your values drive that purpose, you find that your goals will have some, some core that doesn't change. For example, ethics. Your purpose in life is to be ethical in whatever you do. It will be there as a core of whatever goal you set out to be, irrespective of the age, irrespective of what you're doing or circumstance, it's irrespective of if you were 16 or 76. Staying consistent to your goals invariably means you have to stay consistent to your purpose, your why. 
purpose is why, why you do what you do. Have I answered your question or has it gone to philosophical? <laughs> but that question is really a philosophical question. Yeah, I think it's just right. I think it's just right. So thank you very much, Maureen. Again, wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to get your feedback on the questions. Again, for those on the on the call, I know there's a lot of interest in hearing more from Maureen. Uh, we'll record all of your questions and be sure to share be sure to share answers in another format uh, after um, today's event. So moving on to the next segment uh, of our program, uh, we want to be sensitive of everyone's time here, uh, but have some exciting things to share uh, relative to BNET and, and Growth Casa. And so uh, in the next segment of our program, uh, uh, we'll be hearing from managing partner uh, of Growth Casa and BNET Learning, uh, Chine Uma. Um, Chine is a uh, Leading uh, is a leading voice in the initiative of Growth Casa, which is BNET's learning impact vehicle. Uh, Chine is a managing partner at BNET, and she's going to speak a little bit about those impact initiatives. So, Chine, I'll uh, hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Jonas. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I hope your Finishing Strong 2023 experience has been amazing. Um, thank you so much, Maureen, for that insightful keynote. There were so, lots of learning points from me, and I can see all of the conversations that were going on in the chat room. Uh, thank you so much. And congratulations to all of our winners our early bed winners and our Slido winners, um, just to mention that you have something good coming your way. Um, like Jonas mentioned, a member of the team, a member of our team will reach out to you in the coming days on how you can redeem your prize. For the early bed winners, you have won yourself a customized gift back from Peanut Learning, and it has a number of interesting goodies. I'm sure you would want to, um, you want to use all of that. And for our Slido winners, you have won a cost voucher that gives you discounted access to any of the courses um, that we offer at the moment. So I'm excited on your behalf. Congratulations to you! And in the coming days, we will reach out to you on how you can redeem. Um, those gifts and prizes. Now, back to what I am here for. If you are a regular attendee at Finishing Strong, you will know that this is the fourth edition, correct? Um, and of course, Finishing Strong, as hosted by Growth Casa by BNET Learning, has embarked on a number of impact initiatives in the last couple of years. And so after now, you're going to be watching a short video clip that chronicles our impact journey for the last three years, all that we have done all that we have achieved and i will be back after that video to give you an outlook of the rest of 2023 and of course announce our ypsp scholars and give you an outlook into what we have in store for you for 2024 so please pay attention watch the video um feel free to interact in the comment section if you have feedbacks um, i mean thoughts and comments feel free to share those in the comment section and i will be back after the video um, to talk us through the rest of what our impact initiatives are for the rest of the year and of course going into 2024. Happy viewing. The founder of BNET Learning in the person of John Udrabusa said, it's not about what we can get from people. It's even not about the revenue, income from training, but more of the value we can give to people. And today I'm happy to announce the list of winners um, for the scholarship program. We have Ola Rewaju Babalola, Elechi, um, Indu. Hello everyone, my name is Emanuela. I am one of the beneficiaries of the Young Professional Scholarship program by being and learning at Kukaza. Personally, for me, this cohort and this opportunity by Kukaza and Business has you know, sort of made me realize that being a business analyst or being a project manager is a skill that or is a career path that I can find in. So thank you, Bine, thank you, Kukaza. Thank you so much for this opportunity. But with a narrow focus on candidates who are interested in breaking into the technology space with little or no experience. 
this tech edition we have three calls it will be for data analysis wordpress website development and strong product owner and master who are the winners for the young professional scholarship tech program for this year wow that is a lot of people for this is Miriam, Elizabeth, Sophie, John. And then we need to embark on the path that is right before us, like right now. We need to start down on that journey, the path that is right in front of you. relationship that you have amazing i mean um, even though i'm a part of the team that is doing all of this good work yeah i see some comments in the chat box um um yeah that was quite amazing and in the last three years we have executed a number of impact projects like you can see from the video and we have reached over 100 people absolutely amazing of course i agree with you Ido. and of course as we say at be not learning we don't just teach we coach and be mentor we are interested in the total personal and professional lifestyle development of everyone that engages with us as a brand. And so it is my honor and privilege today to announce um, the winners of the third edition of the Young Professional Scholarship Program, um, YPSP 3.0. We've captioned this edition, the Tech Business Edition. Um, and for this edition, we did a couple of things differently. Um, the first thing that we did differently is that we have a lot more scholars. Um, we, we we accepted a lot more scholars into the program. If you paid attention to the video, you would see that for YPSP 1.0, we had a total of 50 scholars. For 2.0, we had 49 scholars. And that is because we typically cap our scholars intake to 50 people. But for this year, because of the overwhelming applications that we received, and the interesting and touching applications that we received this year, I am happy to announce to you um, that this year's YPSB 3.0 The Tech Business Edition will be taking 58 scholars across three learning streams. 58 scholars across three learning streams. 20 scholars for business analysis learning stream, 20 scholars for data analytics learning stream, and of course, 18 scholars for UI UX design fundamentals using Figma, all right? Um, and so we received a number of applications. It was keenly contested. So it was tough selecting these scholars. So if you don't see your name on the final list, list of scholars that were selected, do not worry. 
we will reach out to you. Um, a member of the team will reach out to you in the coming days because we have something for you. For you to take out the time to apply means that you are interested in taking taking your learning, uh, your professional development journey to the next level. And of course, we will reach out to you in the coming days. We have something for you. All right. So it is my honor to congratulate the scholars for the first learning stream. We have the data analyst analytics learning stream, the 20 scholars that made the list uh, for YPSP 3.0 Tech Business Edition. I'm just going to call out the first names, okay, so that we can um, we can go through the list, okay? But everyone, please pay attention to the screen. And of course, after now, we're going to share these on our social media platforms. So if you want to double check that you were actually selected as a scholar, please look out for these across our social media handles and you will see the full listing, okay? So congratulations are in order for data analysis cohorts. I have Blessing, Rachel, Ajisebutu, Ianolua, Benedict, Akinade, Temitope, Ruth, Adewale, Daniel, Wisdom, Philip, John, Adobe, Praise, Love, Wenga, Juliet, Faintolua, Mayowa. Congratulations to you. You have just been admitted into YPSP 3.0 Tech Business Edition for the Data Analysis Cohort. Please feel free to congratulate yourself in the comment section if you see your name on the screen or if you see your friend's name or someone who you know. Please feel free to say congratulations to them. Um, in the comment section, but congratulations to you guys for the second learning stream, um, the business analysis cohort. Can we go to the second learning stream, please? Uh, for the second learning stream, we have, uh, okay, the second uh, learning track that I have here, UI UX design essentials using Figma. We have a total of 18 scholars and we have Lazarus, Temitope, Chiamaka, Oasis, Bolaji, Wokenye, Obeolua, Amatu Basit, Kao Sarah Bukola, Ebenezer, Precious, Salim, Joshua, Obeolua, Oyinlola, I beg your pardon, Inyolua, Francis, and Fuad. Congratulations to you guys. I'm excited for what uh, the journey that you're about to embark on. Congratulations to you. And for the last learning track, the business analysis learning track, we have 20 scholars on that learning track. I have Victor, Great, Kodri, Valentina, Ibuknolua, Mohamed, Oluwa Nifemi, Bidemi, Kayode, Adebayo, Shim, Emmanuel, Samuel, John, Favor, Oluchi, Maximila, Godwin, Esther, and Sulaimon. Congratulations to you guys. You were selected out of over 200 applications that we received for this year's edition of YPSP 3.0 Tech Business Edition. Congratulations. We will reach out to you in the coming days um, on how we can schedule you for the program. And we look forward to having an exciting time with you in class. And of course, for you to share your testimonials. If you watch the video, you'll see testimonials from other scholars from previous editions of YPSP. Please feel free to go on your social media uh, channels on LinkedIn, on IG, and congratulate yourself. Tag us at BNET Learning across our social media platforms. And of course, we will reciprocate and congratulate you. And we look forward to having an exciting time with you in class. Congratulations to you once again. OK. Um, that's it for YPSP 3.0, the Tech Business Edition. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do before I pass it back to Jonas is to announce our winners for the Win a Train campaign. Uh, so when we started the Finishing Strong um, promotions um, for this year's Finishing Strong, we do this yearly, actually. Um, we do a social media campaign, and there we roll out some terms and conditions and ask people to join in. I am happy to announce to you that we have some winners from that initiative, um, and they have won a fully paid access to any of our learning programs at BNET Learning. And of course, in the coming days, a member of the team will reach out to you on how you can redeem that. You can see that we are all about impact. We're all about giving back. We're all about seeing how we can help you achieve your professional and, uh, and of course, your personal um, um, development goals and how we can be a part of your learning journey, um, how we can teach, how we can coach, how we can mentor you. So congratulations to you, Odunola, or get them where. 
and Olua Belumi Arosaye. Congratulations. We will reach out to you in the coming days um, and find out uh, which of the courses you would like to enroll for and how we can schedule you for those courses. So congratulations to you guys. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Please do not be dismayed if you were a scholar and you applied and your name did not make the final list. I'm saying this again for emphasis. We will reach out to you. We have something, we're planning something for you because we also want to be a part of your learning journey as we close our 2023 and of course, enter into the new year 2024. And please keep an eye on the BNET brand across all of our social media platforms in the coming year day is, and of course, in the coming year, 2024, we're going to be rolling out a number of impact initiatives that you can benefit from, all gained towards your prof professional and personal lifestyle development. So thank you every, very much, everyone. Congratulations to all our winners. And I am passing it back to you, Jonas. Have an amazing Finishing Strong 2023 experience. Thank you. It's back to you, Jonas. Thank you very much, Tineke. That was wonderful. Congratulations to all of the winners. Uh, very exciting times. Uh, as someone that's taken one of the trainings, I can tell you it's well worth it. And so excited for those that are going to have the opportunity to attend uh, and encourage those uh, that are interested in learning more about uh, VNet and, and the various uh, streams to visit VNet's social media platforms and web presence to learn more. Now, we're going to continue uh, in the spirit of generosity. It is, after all, the Christmas season. And so we do have some more prizes uh, to share. And this, uh, as I mentioned uh, at the start of the chat, uh, we're going to be giving away some prizes uh, for those uh, that were most engaged uh, during today's presentation. And so on the screen there, you'll see some prizes uh, for those that were most engaged. So three people uh, have uh, been awarded today's prizes, which I'll detail shortly. But Emmanuel Daniel, Vincent, and Aji Buchan, uh, congratulations on uh, winning prizes for being the most uh, engaging. So much appreciated. Excited to let you know that you'll be winning a gift, a gift bag with customized BNET gift items and a book uh, titled Fearless. Uh, which was written by uh, a previous um, a previous Finishing Strong speaker, Jane Edgerton Idahin, uh, who was a 2021 a keynote speaker for Finishing Strong. So excited for you to receive that gift bag and hope you enjoy it. Uh, at this point in the, in the presentation, you will see shortly uh, in the comments section, a feedback form uh, will be populated. Um, we're asking audience members to fill out that form uh, and we'd also like to mention that there is an opportunity to provide video or audio feedback uh, for those participants that are interested um, at the end of today's presentation. So if you're interested in providing your feedback, either via audio or video or both, we'd ask you to stick around uh, for a few minutes after today's uh, presentation or today's event uh, so that a BNET, um, uh, a BNET representative uh, can hear from you. Uh, and your feedback. Again, if you prefer to simply fill out uh, the feedback form that is available in the comments section, your input is very, very valuable. Of course, uh, Vina has developed this program uh, really with the intention of providing valuable feedback or valuable information for those that attend. And so any feedback that you can provide is very much appreciated. So while you're providing that feedback, uh, I'd like to, to close out today's um, presentation um, by simply thanking you again for attending. Uh, we heard a lot about the need um, to continue to position ourselves to be successful in the changing landscape of today's world. We heard about some um, influencing, very influential factors like uh, artificial intelligence, how, how that'll impact our opportunities into the future, and how that underscores, of course, the importance of positioning yourself to be successful in tomorrow's economy. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Maureen for uh, providing us her, her time and expertise for those that had questions uh, that didn't get answered. We'll, we've uh, been sure to collect um, those questions and we'll be sure to provide uh, those answers in another uh, format um, shortly. Again, one more time, I'll just encourage you to fill out the feedback form if you attended today, which we had over 80 uh, 80 participants. So looking forward to lots of feedback. Um, I'll close it out today by um, by suggesting for those that would like to provide your audio or video feedback, 
Uh, you can do that by simply sticking around for a few minutes after today's presentation uh, in the Zoom meeting. So the Zoom meeting will not close. For those that are interested in, in providing that feedback, please uh, stick around. And then lastly, uh, BNET has a strong uh, presence across multiple uh, social media channels. And so if you're interested in learning more about BNET, I'd encourage you to go to LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, at BNET Learning, uh, where you'll learn a little bit more about the history of BNET, the program offerings, uh, and you'll be able to, uh, to learn how BNET can continue to uh, provide value um, in, um, in your education and your success going forward. So once again, thank you to everyone for attending. Very much appreciated. Uh, looking forward to next year's edition, but uh, wish you a happy new year and Merry Christmas for all those who are celebrating. And again, lastly, if you're interested in um, in your if you're interested in providing your feedback via video or audio, stick around uh, in the Zoom meeting where you'll have an opportunity to share that feedback with a BNet representative. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you, everyone. Bye. For those that are sticking around to provide feedback, uh, in a few minutes there, uh, we'll be having a VNet representative on the line to get your feedback. So please do stick around. You'll see. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I have created a breakout room. Um, that's where we'll be taking the feedback. So I would like us to join the breakout room. I've invited everyone to join. Um, I'm guessing since you waited, you would like to give us the feedback. So please let's go into the breakout room to join. Thank you.
Thank you so much, everyone. We've concluded the um, feedback section um, and we were going to shut it down here. Thank you for staying. Thank you for waiting. And we hope to see you at the next one. Till then, keep engaging with the brand. I've been learning across LinkedIn, um, social, uh, across Instagram, across Facebook. To all of our winners, we will contact you in the coming days on how you can redeem your prize. So rest assured, if you want anything, we will be reaching out to you and you will get your gift, okay? Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.